Okay, I think we're live again. Yay! It's another Friday, so I'm back reviewing portfolios. And today we're reviewing David Howard's portfolio. Woo! So David Howard's one of my friends. He's a professional animator, but um, he also wants to specialize more in storyboard. So I gave uh, David a couple of assignment, and it was just that, oh, you know, like um, the same old, uh, kind of just grab the, um, kind of make a cover letter. And then also uh, um, show us like a job description that you're applying for. And also he also actually self-evaluated his portfolio a bit more too. So this is very common as well too. Sometimes you have a professional in some other field or some other, other position who wants to get into another position. So we're kind of looking at how that's also tailored a bit. Because sometimes you know like you have a professional background in graphic design and you want to be an animator or you want to be a previous or concept person. And it's kind of uh, a little bit different. So therefore, there's like still a lot of things where you can still use your old stuff, but you'll want to tailor your new stuff towards your portfolio as well, too. So let's take a quick look at uh, David's uh, portfolio first. So this is really cool. He has like a nice little um, animated kind of GIF thing here first. And it says animation, storyboard, filmmaking. So I would think that if you want to do storyboard first, you probably want to put storyboard first before animation and filmmaking as well, too. And filmmaking, uh, that's if you do a lot of live action. Otherwise, like you might want to just say um, storyboard animation first, just for focus, for focus sake. Okay, but let's go down. So he has two demo reels. One is a storyboard reel and one is an animation reel. So let's take a quick look at the storyboard reel first. Bloop. So he has like the little effects, kind of like arrows. So I guess it's like a montage, a montage of different storyboards. And this one has like a voiceover type of thing too. It's an explanation. So almost like a little TEDx kind of um, storyboard type of thing. Okay, I'm going to fast forward that a little bit. Uh. So there's another storyboard. This one has like the little um, shots number, scene and shot number, and it's got a little, I guess that's for a voiceover. Yeah. So this one also has like a, like a voice type of thing too. Now this one is a little bit more, I think would be, has a little bit more depth to it with like the color grayscale type of thing too. Okay. Buttons. So this is around, I would say around um, two minutes. So well, uh, well, um, talking about this particular type of thing, usually if it's a storyboard, sometimes you don't actually need a reel. Uh, you'll have story, and I see there's a story page here first. So before we look at animation, let's look at story first, because um, if we say we're, we're focusing more on storyboarding, so that's what we're going to do first right now. So for example, if I go to story, uh, what I would say first is if you go to the first page, whatever is your main thing, you definitely want the person like looking at this to be able to tell first because we know there's some animation, some storyboard, but this this space, like I, I said, uh, the beginning space, that's your real estate. And whatever is your real estate, you want to use utilize it um, so that it's kind of like maximized. So therefore, I would say that like if possible, this should be something that's like a storyboard you're proud of type of thing too. So uh, let's go to story page. So in terms of story page, there's some animatic videos here up here. There's uh, also, let's see, click for full panels. So this one has like the, so I would say this is probably humor. So it's like Nathan says, I'm saying the book is better. So you see this and then kind of going with the shot numbers. Uh, uh, one thing when you're doing like a storyboard, you'll definitely uh, notice that like you see this dot, dot, dot. Um, when you're starting one panel, 
and you're ending the act action at another panel, you definitely don't want to repeat the lines. And then this doing this is really good because it says like, uh, for example, if you see panel 3-3, three, three, it says, Nathan, the movie completely dropped his dra uh, dragon wolf companion. And then you see at 4-2, it ends at and added an unnecessary bo boat chase through Neo Cincinnati. So that's a good way to kind of show like, the uh, like okay, from here, this is where it starts. And this is where your dialogue ends. So that's really good. Also adding um, different uh, line of actions or like camera movements. So uh, let's see, I saw your fan art, romantic. Um, so t in terms of background, depends. Uh, sometimes you might need it, sometimes you might not, uh, depending on what type of production you're working on. But sometimes a little context, like uh, like you can use like grayscales to kind of like give a little di different values between like background, foreground, things like that as well too. So I would say that this particular one is a lot more dialogue based. Uh, so this one is a dialogue based one. Um, I would say that one of the things when you're doing storyboard, you definitely want to make sure that it's uh, you're showing the different varieties in terms of story. More so, like a story is actually a little bit more important than art because some people say, "Oh, I can draw, therefore, like uh, I can do storyboard." Yeah, you can do storyboard, but is it a good storyboard? Is the main thing. Like so, uh, the things that you want to show is sometimes like a variety, a variety, like comedy. Uh, also, you want to show that you can do drama uh, and action type of thing because um, there's like the the three the, the different main stories would be like that like you know if you do a lot of animation for like TVs sometimes it's comedy for for film sometimes it's action and then there's also drama as well too so the different moods are all, also depends so if we look at this particular one this one does have like you know like the gray background and the white that's a really good way to kind of differentiate the foreground and background for sure uh, and this one I think it's there's no dialogue so it's a bit more humor based do, 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 do. so it's like she's putting in the the 2.30, she presses it, and then, uh, let's see, she falls asleep. Then after she falls asleep, the sun comes up, then we see her from a different angle, and she's like, oh no, uh, we're going to see that the probably the alarm clock didn't work, and then the um, phone didn't, her phone didn't ring, so now she's really, really late. There's three new messages, so you see this one, mom. So something like this, this uh, might be a little bit redundant because um, we, we kind of see what's happening. So you can actually probably, like, and, and I know you want to show the expression. Uh, that's something you can actually add another line of and say action or something like that. So you, you would only need like the, from this board to another board because uh, this one is that uh, she's like pressing the phone. So you can, you can actually uh, minimize these two by putting like the action line and then just with the action descriptions like, you know, like phone pressing or something like that. So that way you can actually save boards as well too. Okay, and uh, same with same with these ones as well too, because um, typically, uh, d depending on who's actually looking at your um, portfolio too, we're not sure if it's a recruiter or if it's a professional storyboard artist or if it's a lead storyboarder. So um, sometimes you also uh, you know like you want to get across the message as soon as possible because they they might not like have time to click through a lot of different things. Oh, so this one's an interesting type of shot. So uh, sometimes people do ask, oh, how do we board uh, things that have, you know, like panning? So you can do that as well when you're panning different shots. It's like putting two cameras angle and then putting up and then down. So that's a that's a really good way to um, kind of show like uh, different panning shots. And then you can like add shots like that too. Uh, I would still say that like if possible, it would definitely be nice to add in um, if it doesn't have dialogues, just on the bottom, like the different, like a little short uh, action description as well, too. Uh, so, yeah, because I mean, one, after a while, this kind it's like nine pages, I think. So nine pages and then we go down. So I, uh, I think actually, let's see, let's see, let's look at this board. OK, this was also one of the boards inside of the um, demo reel. So we start with page one, we see a uh, I would say this is Hulk. Hulk meets Deadpool type of thing. So Hulk's uh, this camera, this like goes action up, and then the car comes in. The car comes straight forward. Then so uh, one of the things is you might want to kind of separate. Let's see. Let me see. Let me check this one other one first. Mm. So beep beep. Same thing is uh, sometimes uh, a lot of repeating actions. It's like it's almost like you're kind of animating it and then putting it into a storyboard. Uh, you might want to consolidate that into a shorter type of board as well. So because I feel like a lot of this action, there's uh, some panels that you can put together like the beep, beep, beep. 
like you can actually already start with just this one and say that oh this person is getting up or something like anything that has like more than this that's like an animation that's already basically more animatic than for than than you would want to lay out in the storyboard let's see uh, as well so you see something like this camera angle and yeah so this one has has like the little um uh camera camera kind of thing because there's like the different boards sometimes you use different types of arrows as well one to show action and one to show um camera so you kind of be aware of that uh i think this one is like uh more of the battleborn one let's see uh which david did mention that this was a little bit older so he didn't feel, feel like it was as good so uh, one of the things that I did mention and ask was, oh, inside of resume, which we will look afterwards, um, that's the one that is a little bit more, most like a professional experience related to the field that you want to be in. But he said that he wasn't really super proud of this. So therefore he decided that like um, he didn't really want to showcase it too, too much. Uh, so we'll, we'll tackle that as well. What if you worked on something that was like a big name, but not as related? And also what if it's not as um, prominent as you want to show the stuff? Uh, so this one, so this would be comedy. I would see this type of type of thing would be comedy. Yeah. So you see under here, he actually has like uh, the computer goes alert and the computer says press the red button. So those are like sometimes like little description that can help you with your stuff as well too. Because when you're making boards, there's more than just one type of storyboard. There's like a pitch board. There's also like uh, like a rough type of board. Uh, and there's also like when you jump into animatics. So the level of polish and the level of details in each of them are a little bit different as well, too. So we'll go down first. And um, I think he writes, too. So he has a little bit of script sample on the bottom. We're not going to check the script sample just yet, but uh, let's see. Let's go up. So I would say that like looking at this bo this this uh, portfolio, it would be a little bit more comedy based than action based. So one of the things that with comedy is there's usually a ten tendency to um, go towards a lot of talking heads. So uh, with the talking head syndrome type of thing, and uh, then you also want to kind of check out if there's something where you can omit instead of head, you show a lot of more action and a lot of more of like the comedy style. This one is a little bit, uh, probably a little bit more action, but uh, not too many action still. So uh, definitely what I would probably try to add in more here is a variety. Like I, I saw uh, in terms of animation, one second. Oh, here, Herd. So, I mean, uh, David's thesis film was called Herd, and this one actually has more action, I would say. So I would actually like try to, oh, but oh, there's only, two pages in this particular one uh, here. So there's another thing that you can definitely do, which will showcase uh, certain things a little bit better. So I'll show a little couple of examples as well, too. Um, yeah, if there's if you're doing storyboard uh, uh, and I think you have more animation than this already. So I would uh, try not to put in too many things. Uh, I think overall, like this, this website is done like well in terms of professional looking, but there's still too much content on it. So I would actually, instead of put in, I would work on taking things out as in like, oh, what is my top like uh, three to five storyboards? Uh, and here's the resume. One of the things that's really nice, I think he did on his business card too, is he has a little comic kind of thing. And if it relates to your feel, you can definitely put in your um, illustrations or things like that. Like a lot of times people are illustrators and they're like, oh, should I make my uh, resume more illustrative or uh, like Word document format? They, I th for me, I feel like, you know, it really varies about like uh, in terms of personality. But the main thing is it should be legible. So you, the, number one, you can read it. Don't cram too many things into it. And also, like, if you are an illustrator, there is some real estate. Like, I keep using the word real estate, but it's true. You know, it's about your branding and what you can show. So therefore, you can utilize that those, like, little tiny spaces if you have to kind of showcase your stuff, like how David is putting his little thing here. So one of the things I would be a little bit be, uh, careful about is making sure the fonts don't become too small. Uh, and also whether it's uh, quite legible. Like in this case, I think this is borderlining like on like it's readable already. Any any more than this would probably not be in terms of the color and stuff like that. So let me zoom in a little bit more to show this first. Bloop. Oh, whoops, here it is. So first he has like a little introduction. Hi, I'm a storyboard artist and animator in New York with a background in live action, filmmaking, and stand-up comedy. I love working with other artists to flesh out ideas, de develop. So these are really nice too. Like sometimes like a little small introduction crafting like your objective and stuff. It's very personable. So that's a uh, nice, it doesn't take up too much space. You don't want to explain your whole life story because nobody really has like the time to do that. And uh, what they really want to know is, can you do the work? 
So when we're looking at this, so it has like a Master's of Fine Art, Bachelor of Art, so you graduated from animation, multimedia, and film. Uh, definitely this part is good uh, to concentrate on this. I would say that uh, you would actually want to put in the software uh, that you're uh, going to be working in the most more. So I would actually move up Storyboard Pro um, to the top, then Photoshop. Photoshop would probably go down because if I wanted to do storyboarding, I want to like specifically show that it's good. Right now, when it goes downwards, it kind of, sometimes there's a tendency to feel like, oh, um, this is not a priority program or I'm not as good in this program as the one on top. And something like self-motivation, I probably wouldn't put in there because uh, it's not really like a skill set. I mean, it's a discipline. It's something that contributes to your personality, but in terms of resume, uh, those are things that they can probably see more in your work or in your cover letter. Uh, here, da, da, da. same thing with uh, dialogue, because I, uh, I, when I look at this, I wouldn't be sure what kind of dialogue, because if you already said you are good at screenwriting, then I probably wouldn't need you to write dialogue, because I would know that you kind of know writing as well, too. And then uh, these are nice when you have little awards or like um, like being invited to do panels and stuff like that. So definitely, uh, but also depending on whether they're um, relevant or not, usually if something is an experience that's over seven years, five to seven years old, I would kind of omit it and put like a little asterisk and say like awards and blah, blah, blah from this year, omit it. Um, so, I mean, as long as, long as but as, as long as it's relevant. I mean, I, one of the hardest things is, you know, sometimes you do a lot of different things. You have a lot of experience. The hard part is what do I cut out? Because after a while, you're going to look at it and you're like, oh, you know, in 2006, I was a uh, uh, captain of the anime club, something like that. And you either like, oh, I want to put that down as my leadership skills. But at, until that point, 2006 anime club um, president is kind of like not something you would want to put. Uh, you would think that like in the year 2019, you'll have something that's already a little bit more professional and more stuff. You can be proud of that and, you know, still showcase it in your own home, but that's probably not the place that you want to put in the resume as well. And then you have these ones where you have like short films. Sometimes these are really good too, because then at least um, it's a little bit of a validation where it says, oh, oh my film, film was selected into this and that type of thing as well too. But I think the other thing that you want to think about here is when you say heard an Ikea way, I see and I look at it and I'm like, is that a film? Or is it an animation? So a little tiny little description underneath can usually tell like that as well. Although I see over here too, there's uh, the part that's over here that says the same thing uh, twice. So one of the things that you could also actually do is if you wanted to, you could put the official selection underneath uh, the, the work that you're doing. So that way it can also save space as well too. Because uh, if we look at here, we'll see that, okay, starting from the top 2018, um, David worked on my cartoon, pre our cartoon president uh, for Showtime, but that's as an artist animation lead, uh, not like as much storyboard, but the good thing about this one is it's leading a team. So it shows that you can lead some stuff. So it's like co-lead a team constructing animation rigs for character animator. Although one of the things you want to be careful about is whatever you show more experience of, maybe the recruiter will look at your stuff and go like, oh, maybe I should ask uh, David to be an animator instead of a storyboard artist, which for us is like if the point is to try to get more into storyboard. And even though, you know, like you don't mind doing animation and things like that, it would nice be definitely be nice to try to like um, work a little bit more on um, trying to focus and highlight some more storyboarding stuff on the resume. So, uh, but I know we're going right now in chronological order as well. So even like this, when you're saying lead animator artist and animator, you can actually put these two together as well too. And just say that, oh, lead from, uh, so I'm not sure why this one is two different one though. Uh, so I think that's a question. I mean, David, if you're watching, maybe you can uh, enlighten us as to why this is uh, two different things. Or maybe if you're trying to say that you were a lead at this part, if that's the case, then you can probably put in the paragraph lead from this to this time, and then you can still consolidate both of that together. Um, second part, uh, motion graphics artist Carnegie Hall created this, uh, oh, different jobs. So those are two different jobs. Okay. I think uh, that if, if those are two different jobs might, or, or is it two different roles? 
because they they still have like the same title on oh different descriptions yeah if it's dif different description uh what i can suggest is you can actually consolidate this and say you did two different things or and you can say like lead from this because i mean uh you can also like for example co-lead uh team constructing animation rig for uh, adobe character animator uh, also i think there's a space between e and r here so you might want to check on that as well too for the character animator uh and uh and then for and an animated uh, and de and developed animation pipeline uh for series by Stephen Colbert because I think I think like that's that's just basically trying to consolidate something like if you're working in a for example if I was working at a studio and at first I was doing illustrator at a studio and then and then afterwards I changed to background I would still consolidate both of those together as well too if it's the same studio um then it's also motion graphics artist, Carnegie Hall. Uh, this is good to have because a lot of times motion graphic artists also has like storytelling as well too. Um, then we have animator space space eight. So one of the things that uh, I like here is that it tells you what kind of animation it is. So it says it's a short film. And then this one, like sometimes you can also say 3D, 2D, series, feature. Those are keywords that you want to put into different like stuff inside to say that like what type of anim like film is this? Because the difference between that is if you're working on a feature versus we're working on a series or working on a short, it's like sometimes a time span. So if you say you worked on a series, somebody will know, oh, okay, this person has continuity. They've worked on something that's uh, a, a, like a series of things versus, oh, I did a short animation, which is, it's nice, but it might be like a shorter time, period time as well too and uh harman quest definitely uh so here this is the other one i'm fo focusing a little bit more on because uh, there's a lot more material and especially with storyboarding here is uh heard the thesis film here so it says director story artist slash animator so usually for this uh i would say uh director slash story artist um and 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 even though like I said, there's three different roles up here sometimes you can consolidate into the um description as well so for this, uh, it says consult it with thesis committee to flesh out the story and directed a crew of 20 an uh, artists to create the film. What I would probably put instead would be something like, oh, uh, directed a crew of 20 artists to uh, create a 2D animated short. Uh, so it's like directed, story, uh, storyboarded and animated while like leading these people. But I feel like consult it with thesis committee it doesn't actually have to be in the description because it already says thesis film. So it, w it would be almost like an assumption that uh, this would already be something that you have to consult with your thesis committee with. Uh, now this other one too, uh, so animatic story real editor slash clean up animator. So uh, in terms of if I was making this into a storyboard um, specific resume, I would definitely put animatic slash story real editor first and then for cleanup artists I might not put that in but I would put that in the description because it would be like uh, also, um, uh, also clean up on this animation as well something like that it's mainly right now what we're trying to do is we're understanding that there's a lot of experience here but we're trying to consolidate it so that it's a little bit more targeted towards storyboard and this is uh, in the case that if you're applying for a storyboard um, position uh, then they see a lot of animation. They'll be like, that's nice, but uh, I'm struggling to see uh, the emphasis in storyboarding. So that way you're trying to actually time sometimes removing some stuff or making a less priority so that you can uh, kind of um, create a focus of where you want to look at as well. And even stuff like this, this is a storyboard artist, storyboard artist, storyboard artist. So that's a good thing. Even this as well for like uh, uh, lead cleanup animator for so I see another one here. There's another one here that says storyboard artist for Battleborn, which is similar, I would say, to this, but I guess it's a timeline that's different. So when there's sometimes a timeline that's different, even if you're working on a separate stuff too, you could always say 2013 to 2015, right? Or is it 16? Okay, so I, I would assume it's 16. Okay, so I would put like 2013 to 2016, I did this. So that way, like if it was something that even if you stopped in between and then you redid again, I would probably still put that because then you can consolidate it because uh, right now it, it would still, it looked like it's two different separate things when it can be consolidated. Because like um, psychologically, usually the human li mind likes sets, you know, it likes sets of things, it likes things to be in order and put together. So I think like that's something that you can definitely like kind of consolidate together and emphasize on um, storyboard uh, artists or things like that as well too.
Um, and then I would leave. I would leave Army of Frogs separated because it's a different project. Okay, storyboard artist, same thing. Uh, so here's, there's the website here, info, uh, films, and stuff. And if I was just, I, if I was um, separate, um, submitting this portfolio to a studio that's looking for a storyboard artist, I would probably put storyboard artists on the bottom here as well too. Just because that they, if someone's getting an email, a cover letter, then they look at the resume, they'll be like, okay, it's, it's, uh, this person really wants to be a storyboard artist. While as if you were applying for a different animation job, then you would put uh, animation. Or if you're applying for a job that's looking for a generalist, you can put storyboard slash animation as well too. Uh, and this is the thing, a lot of times people think that you only have one resume, but no, like sometimes you have different resumes you tailor to different stuff. Like you're, if you're applying for a different jobs, you'll, you would have that as well. So so therefore it's like it's a little bit more um, focused type of thing. Because if, if, if they're looking at your resume, where your resume is almost like a generalist, versus they're looking at another person's resume that says they're they specifically want to be a storyboard artist then that the other resume kind of looks a little bit more focused if the job that I was looking for was a storyboard artist type of job as well so I think let's look at this one so this is an interesting one so um, David uh, brought up like job description so on this job description like um, I, I told him to kind of look for like you know a job that is uh, you're applying for and how you how you would write it so this one is like, okay, job description. It says, we're seeking a storyboard artist for a hybrid animated feature in New York, because David's up in New York. A storyboard artist will work closely with the story team leader to execute uh, storyboard production deliverables. Another thing about this as well, too, is um, if you want to go into storyboard, definitely look up the different roles there are, because there might be like some storyboard artists, there's going to be like, like story team, story blah, blah, blah. So you want to kind of look at those roles and look at the keywords of what they're, they're, what they're looking for and try to see if you have that experience or not and work that way into your resume portfolio or find work that you would do and that would um, put that in there. So in this way, it'll be like, okay. And the other thing too is storyboarding for films and storyboarding for um, animation are not always the same. Uh, so therefore, like there's like a couple different things as well too. So uh, let's let's continue with this first. Is what you'll do is you'll deliver storyboard with attention to entertainment, clarity, and comedy, acting, performance, cinematic storytelling, composition, and camera. And uh, sometimes also uh, going into the field of 3D, you can be a cinematic artist as well too. So sometimes like you know like you they they're also looking for people to do uh, storyboarding, but in 3D or also pre visualization in 3D as well too. Um, so using knowledge, of, so if you have uh, uh, experience in Maya and stuff, you could always just do a storyboard in 3D as well to kind of add to your collection of portfolio to show that you can do that as well. Uh, using knowledge of CG, stop motion, or hybrid animation to ensure that posing, staging, and cutting is both dynamic and uh, producible. So when they say producible, or sometimes we're also looking at budget as well too, where you can say it's dynamic, and also, uh, but sometimes you might be placing cameras in places where you can't actually realistically get those cameras in. So if you're storyboarding for film, there are limitations to cameras as well too. Like, oh, you know, like I'm filming things. Can this actually be done in a real shot? Or is this just my imagination? Or like a uh, kind of space type of thing. Troubleshooting, address notes, meet deadline from concept to deliverable. Collaborate with grace, humility, inclusion, and open-mindedness. And what you'll need is two years of story production on feature film, short, or series. Storyboarding samples or credits demonstrating excellence. And storyboard tools such as uh, Photoshop, Storyboard Pro, Flix, or ProHire 2. So some other people also ask, if it asks for two years of experience and I don't have two years experience, should I apply? This answer it depends on how... Um, how much you have in your portfolio and how much you tailor it. because sometimes you don't actually like they ask for two years but they're actually looking to see if there's somebody who has the experience or can actually do the job or not or also can collaborate with teams so if you can produce some type of um evidence that you can actually do the work and stuff i would say go ahead and submit it anyways because um you know like you don't have to cut yourself out before someone else does but i would also let uh kind of like people around me take a look at my uh, portfolio first to make sure that it's actually kind of up to par because if your portfolio just have illustration and you're applying for a storyboard job then you're definitely like well that, i'm not gonna say definitely but you're probably not gonna get it or if you're applying for a graphics uh, a graphic design job and your portfolio only has illustration but no typography layout or graphic stuff you're probably gonna have a lower chance of getting it than somebody who actually has stuff like that as well uh, so this is david's cover letter 
So David says, hi, I'm, uh, you know, hello, my name is David Howard. I'm a freelance storyboard artist in New York. I would love to collaborate with your team of artists at blank, whatever the studio name, and I would like to apply for a blank position, posted blank. So this is a good one, a good way to usually start cover letters because it's just like letting like whoever post this out say that, oh, this is my name. <laughs> important to know your name uh, and uh, I'm a storyboarder artist in New York because sometimes there'll be applications from out of state out of country and certain jobs might not be looking for out of state or out of country so it's a easy way to know right away whether they want someone there or not but if you're applying for a different state and you're actually willing to relocate for like a part-time gig or something and you don't want them to know that you would omit your state or your location instead um, drop out did it drop out let's see is it dropping hello can anybody still hear me uh, anyone still here okay well let's see uh no oh so it cut oh, okay okay eventually I think it can get back okay so let's continue real quick first is uh, then he also wrote upon completing my undergraduate degree in filmmaking live action I went to earn my master's degree in animation a, and a passion of both medium that drove me to seek how to better serve a narrative this experience has allowed a unique perspective thinking outside of the box when I tackle the story I've worked to hone my skills on short films and story sequence for Gearbox Battleborn uh, video game this past year I worked as an artist lead on Showtime to help build a pipeline uh, uh, for tested un untested hybrid animation and I believe I can make a real contribution to your team and there's my portfolio this is good one thing I would switch is I would actually put my personal uh, professional experience up first before I put my um, uh, degree because uh, then it actually catches people's attention better first because the first thing it'll be like oh this person has professional experience uh, because if you're looking at hiring would you hire a person who has professional experience more or would you hire someone who's uh, graduated from a uh, master's degree for me I would probably hire somebody who has more professional experience more because just because you graduate from a master's degree doesn't mean you have experience in the studio yet versus you of your professional uh, experience is probably topping education but if you're applying to be a teacher you would definitely put masters before that and not saying that like the degree doesn't matter because degrees definitely shows that you've honed your skills you're on a higher level and stuff like that but putting the professional one first is like kind of like a showstopper that says I have the experience that you are looking for especially when it answers the second qualification that they ask for is two years in storyboarding so that way they'll be like okay this person already qualified that particular part as well too so therefore when I go up back here uh, it's like like I say we, we're looking at this and it's also here use knowledge of CG stop-motion hybrid animation so that's why David also put this in so I would say professional experience with uh, the fact that you worked as a lead artist to on Showtime to help build the pipeline would probably come first and the other part is really nice it's all short and sweet so I think this is a good cover letter I would probably just change to put the professional experience first and the uh, master's thing second okay so there's also this sometimes you're answering Facebook posts not just cover letters so how do you do that so um, some people are like hey guys like how I usually do you know and have job posting my friend is looking for an animator storyboard artist that can start work ASAP we need a storyboarder or animator with a good camera eye that can produce five like is based on songs scripts above for a new season of blank a season of bilingual sing-along on Nick jr. And then he writes an and then he's email because they might usually give your email so you go here hi hello my name is David Howard I'm a storyboard artist uh, I saw the post on Facebook group looking for a storyboard artist blah 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 I happen to be both often simultaneously my portfolio is here and this is a good way to write an email the one thing that I would definitely check out first would be that if you actually know this person personally on Facebook you should write down hi I'm a friend of this person or you should kind of talk to them first and tell them hey I saw your posting and I want to apply for this uh, do you think you can refer me so this way your, you can, your friend might be able to send uh, a, like a recommendation to the to the friends they have already or send another email and say hey uh, my friend uh, David is about to apply you know he's really cool and everything I, I think you should definitely hire him or or they could be like uh, like hey you know like uh, my friend David's come up upcoming kind of thing so instead of being just somebody who's applying for the job you're actually relating yourself to be relatable or have a reference a sort of reference what if this is just a Facebook posting on a normal group you know it's not like somebody that you know I would still message that person who said that they were looking just to give them a heads up and then uh, on the email I would still mention that uh, hi I saw your thing 
uh, your posting from this person's name on Facebook. Because sometimes when you say Facebook group, the it might go back to the person and the person's like, oh, who posted for me? You know, or like, oh, uh, or, or what, what group did they post into? So you're just trying to create a little bit more person personableness, <laughs> like relations when you're doing something like this. So therefore, that's a really a good way to do that for sure. So I think that was it for this particular one. And uh, um, I'm going to show you a couple of really good uh, websites to follow, like how to lay stuff out. Uh, but another one too is I've also talked to my friend Mark Simons, who's a professional storyboarder, uh, and he storyboarded on The Walking Dead, different stuff, and he has a largest um, studio in the uh, East uh, East Coast. Uh, no, wait, not. Yeah, we're in the East Coast. So East Coast. And Mark Simons says that he's going to actually come up one of the other days to to actually help us do with that. Uh, uh, how soon should one follow up if there's no reply? So this is a good one to ask. If you send an email and you don't get a follow up, so after the first uh, email that you send, depending on whether they say job ASAP, ASAP or not, if they say ASAP, I would suggest that you could actually follow up the next day after. Because like if they didn't get the stuff as well, then they'll know that, oh, you know, like um, they, they need someone really soon. So that way, if they've already found someone, you don't have to waste your time. So if, if they used to wear like, hey, looking for someone ASAP, you'll be like, hey, I sent in my portfolio yesterday. Understand that you're looking for something that's really time sensitive and just wanted to make sure you got my stuff. So that way you're like not really pressuring them, but you're actually saying, hey, I sent my stuff. Did you get it? And if they don't, then you can also go on the Facebook post and say, hey, I sent the stuff in. I'm not sure if they got my stuff, uh, but just wanted to follow up because I understand, you know, this is time sensitive. So uh, it would be uh, like uh, great, you know, like I just hope it didn't get lost. So that's a good one. So that's when it say ASAP. If it does not say ASAP, then I would say give it around uh, three to four days to follow up depending on also like day of the weeks. So for example, if someone posted it out on fr uh, Friday and they're not working Saturday, Sunday, I would not expect anyone to reply until maybe Monday or Tuesday. So that's that's another thing is that like if they're doing for job, like uh, weekends are probably resting time unless they say they really need it ASAP. Then uh, I would probably leave at least like around three to four days before I follow up the first time or the sec uh, or, or so. Then if, if I already followed up once, I would probably leave another couple time span of three or four days and then follow up again. If they don't reply back to me, probably they either find somebody, found somebody and didn't, or they didn't reply or blah, blah, blah. Then I would just move on to the next thing. But I would, whenever I send in the stuff, I would be expecting that if I don't hear it back within a week or so and with the first follow up, then the job is probably taken up by someone else or some already. So quick look at, uh, like I said, uh, storyboarding and things like that as well, too. Uh, so this is uh, my friend Dodo. Uh, he's a storyboarder. He's currently at USC, but he also did professional storyboarding uh, when he was a student in Thailand. So one of the things that I do like is let's 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 go to this his first page first. Okay, so this is his first page. The first thing that we see is it says story portfolio. So you know that this person definitely wants to do story artist. He even says story artist up here, even though this font is a little bit small. Um, and then he has like a little like thing. So the first thing that he put up is this. So why did he put this up? And it's almost like a clickable thing. So according, uh, accordingly, sometimes like some recruiters actually like to flip through things themselves. And thumbnails are a little bit too small to look at certain things. So therefore, sometimes when you have something like, if you have a storyboard you're really proud of and you really, really like and you want to show it off, you definitely might want to make it bigger. And this could be in the form of an animatic as well, but usually being able to click through it is really nice as well too. Like, haha, you know, like guess today is my lucky day. And then like you can see like he grab, grab, grab. So you see he doesn't show all the actions, but he shows like the posing is also really, really strong as well too. Haha, <laughs> smoking, grab the money, hehe. <laughs> and then it's like footstep approach, cuts to the next scene type of thing. Okay, so this comes in, you see, okay, I'm going to post this up also inside of the Facebook so you can see this as well as a follow up. So it's almost like you can pitch it yourself. Like sometimes when you're doing storyboarding, like um, I talked to one of my friends who worked at uh, Warner Brothers, she says that you can also do pitch boards. You know, you're like pitching it yourself too. And you're like actually making sound effects and everything as well too, which is a good practice to do because uh, when you're presenting to some other people, you might want to do that as well. So you can make your own voices and stuff too. Like, ha, huh, if you want to join, you better get some cash or get lost, kid. This is also a good way to do animatics when you don't have sounds because usually what sometimes what I'll, what I'll do is I, I either do a scratch track or something like that so I can get the timing down as well too. 
So you can see this is like action. So you can see action. Sometimes he also puts motion blur as well. So the motion blur makes it look like a heavier type of thing as well too sometimes. And he, he's using like a gray to the background so you can see like the difference in the background as well. Bam, bam. So you can actually click this through to kind of see his stuff. So continuing to that, then down here, he actually has the boards in like little panels as well, as well as little clickable panels that you can actually click through to see like a full flesh things. One of the things that you can see that's done really well in here is action scene. Definitely the action in here is really quite strong. Um, it has like a also in certain parts where he feel like it's 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 good to emphasize. He'll also have like the different like gray to white kind of thing to show up the stuff too. So you can see like there's really a lot of action here as well too. And then sometimes he has like a little bit of character stuff on the bottom as well. This is if you do more than one thing. If you do more than one thing, you can put it down. Uh, but if you don't, like you just stick with the stuff. This is another one that uh, is a really good way to put a good thing to put on your portfolio is story beat. You don't always have to put in the whole storyboard, but you can choose the best story beats. That is most important and put it in as well too. And this kind of consolidates your storyboard so that like if a person comes in and look, they can be like, oh, I can see the stuff. So in this particular thing, like uh, this story beat, you can see that, oh, number one, nobody likes his kids. They're all laughing at him. Ha 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 ha. And then like now he's fighting with people because those people are bullies probably. And then it goes to the next shot where it's like, okay, probably when he grows up, he starts to fight with people too. And then he, now he's going into a place where it's like a casino kind of thing. And then he hits like the, the main gambler and then they get into a big fight. And then they're, they come into a, like kind of like a draw where it's like he's drawing a gun on the guy, but then uh, he doesn't shoot or something and then they come to an understanding so just so you can see in this one you can see this particular story where you can click through the stuff yourself or you can also see like the whole segment of the story but then if you don't want to see that you can check the story beat to kind of see like oh this is what the whole story is about in nine panels in nine panels without looking at the story above I can kind of tell what the story is about already then he also has animatics oh these these are really fun uh, but before I show you that, let me skip to one more, which is animation. So one of the good things that you uh, you want to see as well too is uh, actually it's in this one. So sometimes you can actually show the animatic or, uh, and or the storyboard and how it actually turns out as well too. So I'll show show you that really quickly. But before that, let's look at this one first real quick. Uh, so when he kicks into storyboards, he also has all these different panels. It's also it's only like one, two, three, four. So he only chose four stories that he did, main stories to put here. Like a boy named Suga, which is the main one that we already saw. And then the man who wanted a dragon tattoo, which number one, he says this story is based on a so song. So he kind of gives it a little bit of context. Because like a lot of times, one of the things I notice about storyboarding portfolio is um, there's a lot of tendency to put a lot of things on. And sometimes when you put it in abstract, you don't actually know what's going on in the story as well too, especially if you make a montage or a collage. And when you're doing a storyboard portfolio, you definitely want to know the story and get the story as well. So then you can see like this one, he still has his click through. So I mean like when you play, it's almost like an animation. Click through. Uh... So in this really quick thing, I can see like he only put the opening shot. But in the opening shot, you can see that oh this guy's gonna uh, in boxing and then he he lost and then he noticed that like the other guy had a tattoo and the tattoo is winking at him. So he decides to go to the shop to get a tattoo. So like really quick shot, I can already tell what's going on in there. Then he also has like these little these, these panels which shows more of the stuff. Same thing, the same sequence. And then all this, all these different things. So you don't always have to show the whole story, but you do want to show a sequence that actually makes sense or actually encapsulate a small, sick, uh, whole, like chronological like thing, like uh, you know, like when you read like um, articles on uh, uh, like short little articles on things like oh, stories about this and that. Yeah, they tell like a whole story or at least it completes the sequences. So that's definitely a good thing to see as well. The other thing here is like uh, you can also have like when you have animations. So basically he did this whole animation himself. I would recommend for people who are watching this to actually see this. This is only like a minute long, but it's got really good um, storytelling in terms of comedy. So you see like the first thing is like it starts in the bathroom. It's only one minute, so I'll narrate it out. So it's like a lot of sound effects and you see like this guy's waiting for the bathroom. Uh, he really, really needs to go and everybody like needs to go. Posings are really strong, really, really funny by itself already. 
then you see action scenes and you see a zoom type of thing opens up cuts in your eyes are looking at WC then he uses more zoom comes out and then you see this is like a small spot of humor where it's like left behind as well too and then you see like the gorilla and then you see like people with weird expressions very very expressive then you can see the contrast between like a uh, top angle coming down shooting stops It's cheesy grin. And then the gorilla, you can see like the shots. You can see the contrast between like how big the scale is. Weird looking face, cutting back and forth. And then you hear like a sound. And you notice that he farted on the girl's face. And then it's like kind of disgusting. And then they have a long pause. And then they have like the you never go when you need kind of thing, like a commercial type of thing too. So this is another cool thing is that like if you want to show something short and tell a story really fast, doing a mock commercial is also a good idea because like instead of doing a long short story, it's even a shorter short story because a commercial can be done in 30 seconds. A real commercial in real life can be like 15 seconds to 45 seconds. So actually boarding something out like that is a really cool idea because you can actually tell your whole story in that and it's not too long as well. So even you can use that with animatic. So if you can, if you see here, this is the same thing that he did too. This is about the, the same thing, the commercial. So it actually gives you the little stuff. It tells you a little bit snippet about it, what his role is, and it gives you the storyboard that you can flip through. So I would say this is a really good way to put put stuff together. Then he has the segments of artwork and stuff. Not as necessary, but it's always nice to see some live drawing skills because it shows that you can do perspective as well, which is really helpful if, you, if you're doing live action stuff. Uh, the other thing is if you're not good with perspective, proportions, and things like that, uh, you might also want to like learn a little bit of 3D to help you with that as well. Then we can see like Dodo's resume as well too. Like my, my biggest critique of this website is the fonts are too small. It's really, really, really too small. He might, he might want to make it a little bit bigger. So then you look at the resume, you can see that like uh, he put his stuff first. I would actually recommend putting this professional experience up on top of education when looking for a job. And uh, credits um, depends on whether you want to put it because sometimes nobody really knows what it is. One of the things that uh, I, find, I find is that a lot of times people will put their short story in and they'll put the name of the short story, but they don't describe what the short story is. And it's kind of confusing because, you know, the, the recruiter has never seen your stuff before, nor have they worked on your, uh, like ever seen your, your thing so if they look at the portfolio they might be able to trace it back but if they just look at a resume they'll be like oh a lot of people just have random things that actually don't really matter to them as much another one that's a really good way to make an animatic would be this one it's mark simon stuff so this one is uh the walking dead kind of scene so you can actually see this let me put a link up here as well too bam a link so this particular one is Mark Simons, uh, my friend who I who I asked um, later on um, uh, in the week or so uh, he, he to come and help do an in depth portfolio like review of how to improve your storyboards because I'm not a big storyboard artist. I do a lot of storyboarding in my work, but uh, I consider myself more like somebody who looks at your portfolio and be like an outsider who tells you what I should look at and not much of like oh these are the super story kind of thing. But you can see that this is a really good way to lay stuff out is. It's you can compare his boards with what actually comes out too, and that's a really great way to show implementation. So if you made a short animation and you also made an animatic, it's really nice that you can show your whole animation and you can put your animatic on the side as well too. So uh, you can see the use of action arrows and things like that as well too. A little bit of gray kind of thing. Of course, the uh, the live action sequence might not match 100% to what your storyboards are, but it's a good like kind of um, way to show uh, basically what came out as a final product as well. You can even see some of this that is grayed out as well. Some kind of thing. Do a little fast forward. So he did a lot of these for his stuff too. So animatic. So I'm gonna put this website of us as well too. So I think uh, in terms of like today's like really quick, uh, well, it's not even really quick anymore. It's a really long review. Uh, uh, review, I think we're done. Uh, but, and, and I think that's mainly it for me is that when you're doing different types of portfolio, 
you want to be showing what type of role you want to do. And sometimes there's a tendency that when you have a lot of experience, you want to lean on that experience. But if you want to work on something else that is like storyboarding versus animation, you want to put try to put more focus on storyboarding versus what you already have full of. Because I remember when I first started, I had a lot of graphic design background. So my portfolio was full of graphic design stuff instead of uh, uh, animation stuff. And it was a really big transition to learn to change from my graphics portfolio into animation portfolio. And next week, we're also going to just talk about another thing is illustrators. So today I was looking at like an illustrator. Um, there was a posting on Facebook. Um, an illustrator was posting their stuff and say, oh, I'm trying to look for a job. I'm trying to look for different, different things like that. And uh, and she even like um, paid money to subscribe to a service, which was like a service where like, you know, like you can put your stuff on and then try to get jobs from there. Um, but for me, I think the main thing for illustrator is it's a really, really harder field to kind of show because it's such a variety. You can do like illustration for so many different fields. And yet if you show too many things, uh, then it might not be as focused. Or even if you say you want to be an uh, illustrator, there's a lot of things that you can do with that to kind of make your branding better as well. So next week, we're kind of kind of review illustrator portfolios. And you know, if you want to go into animation, you want to go into art department for films, and you want to go into branding, you want to go in graphic designs, how do you separate that and how you how do you kind of like um, find out what your portfolio should look like to apply to certain different types of job so I think that's it for today and then if you have any questions just leave it below I'll leave my Facebook open for three minutes and stuff like that so I am going to sign out now thanks guys